Social prescribing, I think, really will revolutionise the way surgeries treat patients as well as the care that the NHS provides. I'm always thinking, does this patient need the help of the social prescriber? It's a tool we use now in every consultation. I think social prescribing is going to make a massive difference in the NHS. Integrating social prescribing into primary care service delivery is huge. It's about actually what's making the biggest difference for people in their day-to-day -day lives. People need to be listened to. People want to feel that they matter. People want to take control and charge of, of their well-being. Social prescribing, I think, is an exciting opportunity for us to think about health differently and to act on our health differently. To be able to see the difference that social prescribing is making in people's life is amazing. Our health is not just about how well we feel physically, our health is about how we feel emotionally. Social prescribers, we work in the GP and we basically help patients with their health and their well-being. We help them with mainly non-medical support needs. At present, uh, over 50% of GP appointments are taken up by people whose health issues are to do with socio-economic factors, which the GP is never going to be able to resolve. And I think if you're thinking about the individual, your patient, it's really important to think of them as a whole individual. And if you really want them to improve in their health, you have to think about the rest of their well-being. The traditional GP consultation is that 10 minute slot that you get when you book an appointment. But to really explore what's important to an individual takes much more time. If somebody comes to you and says that they're not sleeping very well, there's a, you know, there's a reason. You, in 10 minutes, you can't, really, you can't get to the bottom of that reason why they're not sleeping. But in an hour, I can. So we can really spend time with people to find out what it is that really matters to them. And that's the key thing. Social prescribing is a fantastic way of connecting people who need services within the community and giving them that one-to-one -one support that a social prescribing link worker gives to people. The beauty about it, it is an umbrella, it's not just one thing. It can be linked to charity, it can be linked to gyms, it can be linked to general practitioners. I think one of the really interesting things about social prescribing is, first of all, it's to try not to think of them as patients, but actually to think of them as people. Social prescribing has a huge benefit for patients. Usually when you make an appointment with your doctor, you can only discuss like your rash or your ankle, you can't discuss everything. But with a social prescriber, we're here to listen to anything and everything. We try to adopt this kind of strength-based approach because it's not this model of, you know, you're, you're broken, let me fix you. It's you're managing, you're managing really well, but obviously you need a little bit more help. Social prescription is about empowerment, to get these people the confidence again to take more control in their life. When they offer patients advice like please change your diet, exercise or be more active, people aren't necessarily equipped with how to make those changes and a social prescriber is ideally placed to take that person from their point of need to where they can meet that need. As pressures on GP surgeries have increased, they're trying to find ways to tackle some of the more complex characters passing through their surgery in a more innovative way. The population is getting older, lots of more medical conditions, we're going to be working harder and harder. And these new people came on, these link workers, which I wasn't really sure what they do. But what was fantastic was they were slowly taking away a lot of our workload and doing it really well. I did a referral and the patient feedback was really good, the information I got was brilliant, it saved me a lot of time. We have been using social prescribing over the last five years and if it didn't work we wouldn't put our investment and our energy into it. We've seen a reduction in the number of GP appointments for those particular patients where the social prescribing link worker has been involved. We have multidisciplinary team meetings where we sit and talk about specific patients and the social prescribers attend those meetings and they'll pitch and they'll say, oh, we could just contact that patient and say X, Y, Z. It's really helpful. Social prescribing in London is a key part of dealing with health inequalities. I think there are a lot of people who fall through the cracks who aren't always picked up by services. We do have health inequalities, we do have poverty, we do have homelessness and we do have you know, hunger and so on. So if someone's 
being evicted. That's the thing that's their focus on their mind. They don't want to talk about their health. They want to know, I need my housing result. So the access for people in London, I think social prescribing could make a real difference. So what we're able to do is link them with organisations who can help to ease those problems, help them find solutions, recognise who they can actually go to. Having a positive partnership between the council, the PCNs and ourselves is been really vital for us being able to reach the community. No one of us is going to have the answer at any given time. So by creating a sharing and learning environment, we're able to go further, faster and learn together. Now many of these inequalities are long-standing and they would have predated COVID. But COVID has certainly shone a light on inequalities and in many instances has made them worse. The need for social prescribing, I think, has increased exponentially with COVID. When I speak to some of the patients, they're on their own all day, every day, weeks on end. The pandemic has exposed, in technicolor, issues within our communities that we knew existed, but now we just can't ignore. Patients who were previously vulnerable are now even more in need. They are more isolated, they're more lonely, there's often more financial pressures, employment issues. The pandemic was an opportunity for us to demonstrate what we could do, to show how adaptable we can be, uh, because we've, we've changed the way that we provided our service you know, overnight. It has provided an opportunity for us to really highlight the, the fantastic need and niche that social prescribing has within London. Social prescribing team members are a huge and important resource for commissioners. We also understand that sometimes there'll be things that are missing, that if we link with people and speak with, with people about that, that we might be able to fill those gaps. Social prescribers are really well placed to identify gaps in service provision because they've had that opportunity to have a slightly longer conversation with the residents about their needs. What it gives you is gives you really rich data in terms of what is actually happening to an individual. And I think that helps commissioners like myself to look at better informed decisions around how we design services. To change in different ways. Social prescribing is all new. Two of the practices in our PCNs have never referred a patient to social prescribing previously, but having those social prescribers going into those practices, they've realised the benefits and are now very keen advocates of it. So it's amazing the turnaround that's been achieved in a relatively small time frame. I'll tell you, I'm a very medical person. I, I'm all about medicine, all about evidence-based, but I'm, I've been wowed by the impact social prescribing can have. Social prescribing has a huge role to play in making sure that the NHS is not only sustainable, it's functional. Sometimes the smallest thing can help someone and just that, that link into their community and that extra support has just made all the difference. Every PCN can higher social prescribers. This will mean that our patients get the services that they need and deserve. I feel a little bit better that I know that I have improved someone's life um, on a daily basis simply because I was able to connect them to something that really changed their life. I am actually really excited about the fact that we are going to be able to make a huge difference at a level that we've never been able to do before. It's not just about popping pills, it's not just about getting an appointment, it's about empowering our patients to make a difference in their own lives. That, that is, that's priceless. <laughs>